Hey everyone, Eric here, host of Inside the Gilliverse. As many of you may know, today is the captain of the ship, Vince Gilligan's birthday, and we thought we'd do something very special for him. So I reached out to some of my friends, I'm sure you're going to recognize these faces, and ask if they'd like to send some birthday greetings for Vince, and that they did. So without further ado, let's have a quick look and listen as to what they had to say. Hello, sir. Happy birthday, my friend. I hope it's a brilliant one. I think I'll open a bottle of champagne and toast you myself. Hi, Vince. It's me. You know, they say you have to sing happy birthday twice in order to be safe from COVID while washing your hands. So, happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Vince. Happy birthday to Vince. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vince. You have changed my life and so many people's lives, not just through your brilliant work, but for who you are as you move through the world. And uh, I thank you for that. And I'm so grateful to know you. And happy birthday! Vince Gilligan. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> no hard feelings, right? Hey, it wasn't my idea. It was Eric's idea. I will never do a thing like that. Not me. It was all him. Mm. I'll make it up to you. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear fans. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Yay. I know. I should have been a singer, right? I know. <laughs> the Salamanca Cartel wants to wish you a very happy birthday. We hope you have a great day. Keep breaking bad, Vince. You are a friend of the cartel. Happy birthday, Vince. It's Mike Pattaya. Dennis Markowski, you know. Right there. That's me, the human shish kebab. Again, happy birthday, sir. You look great for 78. And may gravity be kind to you when you sit down on the toilet. Vince, happy birthday. I'm just flying to the States for the first time from Germany in three years since all this mess started. Um, can't wait to see you again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Yes, we do. Happy birthday to Heyday. Hooray day. And every day we celebrate your amazing grace. Happy birthday, we honor you, cherish you, relish you, admire you each and every day. We inspire by you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Yes, we do. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. We love you. Team, we love you. Happy birthday. Hello Vince, here I am uh, back in Canada on a movie set in Vancouver and I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful happy birthday. You are a genius at everything you do. Thank you for teaching me so much and I really hope you have a blast today and I hope to see you really soon. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. I hope it's a good one for you, Vince. Happy birthday. Vince. 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 How are you, brother? Kevin Wattell here. Actually, Rex Lynn here, but Kevin Wattell has a little message for you. I'll give it to you in a minute. I hope this finds you in great spirits and really healthy and 
happy and and your family's healthy and happy and in great spirits. Man, I'm a big birthday guy, and I'm I'm very honored to be able to say happy birthday to you, brother. Uh, I think I should sing happy birthday. And maybe I got a buddy here, my buddy Riddler. He and I want to sing happy birthday to you. This is my grand champion show dog, Riddler. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother. Now, Kevin Wattell wanted me to call you and let you know he's he's doing great. Mason Barrett, he's really doing great. But he apparently still pissed off a little bit at uh, Saul Goodman. But uh, anyway, he wanted me to tell you hello. Happy birthday, Vince. Hope you have a great one. Can't wait for season six, baby. See you later. Notice the hat, too. Good looking hat. Take care, brother. See you down the road. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Vince. Whoa, Dad, I didn't know you could play. Yeah. Chuck sounds better. Happy birthday, Vince. Happy birthday, Vince. Happy birthday, Vince. Hey, Vince, my friend. It's Peter. I'm here in Albuquerque. It is snowing like nobody's business. And I am here to tell you, happy birthday. Have a great one, my friend. Uh, from everybody here in Albuquerque to you, uh, hope you're having a fantastic day. I've been trying to get some dramatic lighting for this. Something you'd appreciate. Oh, wow, look at that. Hey, Vince. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Thanks for this wonderful year we've all had. Despite the traumas we've been through, both of us, uh, uh, here we are, and a great season and a great series wrapping soon. And all to your credit, you're the best. Happy birthday. This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Season 3, Episode 3 of Inside the Gillivers, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, and it comes with great pleasure to welcome back tonight's guests. We've got two of them. One's reading a book. We've got my former co-host and soon-to-be, hopefully, co-host again, Tom Schnauz, and the lovely and talented Betsy Brandt making her second appearance here on the show. Betsy, Tom, how are you? Hi, we're good. I'm speaking for Tom. We oh, are good. Yep, Tom's reading. He's studying. He's, uh, how to Be a Writer, is that the name of the book? This is a book called Time Toilet. Oh, did you write that book, Tom? He does this thing in where a way, he's frozen. Um, he's all, uh, I hate I hate the internet. Can you hear me? Yep, gotcha. We got yeah. you. Okay, this was a gift given by Ariel Levine and Valerie Chu, our writer's assistants. Uh, it's all the quotes. Every every day in the writers' room, they would pick. We're going to, we're going to decipher a little bit. Send it with the uh, room notes for the easy to read. Uh, so there's a lot of delightful stuff in here. And uh, when there's a lull in the action here, uh, or, or uh, people listen in can shout out a date and I'll look it up and see what was said in the room on that day. If you'd like. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. You broke up a few times here, but were you saying like uh, every day you, you read something in the room or how, tell us about that again. Every day, you know, we talk, you know, 
story all day in the room and people would say something silly, stupid, outrageous. And the writer's assistant would pick one quote of the day and put it in an email with the writer's notes. Okay. And so these are all the quotes from every day. The very first quote, which was on my birthday in 2013, uh, the quote is, a penis pump on a judge's desk is a hat on a hat. That was said that day in the writer's room. Uh, oh, wow. Because I think we were, I think we were talking, we didn't know what the show was. We were thinking about having a, there was, I think there was an actual judge at the time who had a penis pump. It was called with a penis pump under his, under his uh, judge's uh, stand there. So we thought about doing it on the show, but then we thought better of it. Yeah. Anyway, here's Betsy. Hi, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. I think I would I wouldn't have minded a penis pump. We're off to a good start, and Michael Mando's not even on the show. It's usually when Michael Mando and Tom get together, it's just <laughs> nuts. It's absolutely nuts. It's I, hot. It is. See, I'm not even. See, Tom. It's been a while since Tom's been on the show, and I forgot his sense of humor, and I forgot how. Oh it's, no, Tom! Looks, he just got the vapors right now. When you said, "Hang on, I have to close this door." <laughs> I I should have known. Well, I should have known. Is walking out. <laughs> I just had to leave. It was too much. Um, I love it. There's you have a book. You're just re drinking your tea and reading a book called Toilet Talk, Toilet Humor, <laughs> Toilet Time, Toilet Terraces, Toilet Tales. That's T A I L S. That's my TV show, Toilet Talk. This is a Toilet TV toilet. Tales coming to you on NBC this fall. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now, who's gonna who's gonna be directing that one? Mm. Yes. We have some. Uh, you want to get to some uh, actual uh, questions? So, you know, we have yeah. uh, listeners out there, or uh, what, do you, what would you like to do today? Well, what we'll do while we're Eric waiting for some. No, uh, well, Eric did no prep for this show, by the way. Everyone usually he sent me. He sent me a list of questions or something. He did nothing this time. I know I did nothing. I'm slacking. He's, he's, he's got other things going on. Yep. There's nothing going on in here in Canada just other than he's shoveling snow. That's right. But we you do. You read your turlet book. And yes. In New Jersey, they'd say turlet. <laughs> While we're waiting for some of the questions to come in in the chat as well, too, we've got two audio questions. We're going to start at the top of the show here with audio questions. So we've got uh, two of them. And the first one is from Karina. Karina is our co-executive producer as well, too. She's running the chat efficiently, as always. And this is her question that I believe it's for you, Betsy. So let, let us know if you can hear this. This is from Karina. Wrong one. That's not the right one. That is the intro. And we're going to go over to that one. And that is over here. And it is right here. Hi, Betsy. Welcome back. This is Karina. I have a question relating to your episode of Soulmates, The Power Ballad of Caitlin Jones. It was my favorite episode, and I think your best work yet. You deserve that Critics Choice nomination for it. How did you go about getting in that dark space in your head for some of those scenes? Good one. Oh, that is good. It, it was a lot of darkness for her. I loved playing that character. Thank you for watching. Um, I I feel like I'm going to sound like a crazy person, but I'm going to tell you, I had uh, recently found out that um, a friend of mine had died and I didn't know he had died. And um, it, I feel like it really, really raised the stakes for me because I was still living in that. And um, I also, even though she's, uh, sorry, spoiler alert, a serial killer, I just loved her. I loved that character. And I kind of thought it was a happy story for her, even though it, I mean, wasn't for me or for you or most other people. Um, but I, you know, I was happy to dive in deep for that. And, um, it was a really, really great experience. Awesome. What a good question, too, from Karina. And there's a second one as well. This is from Lori. And this is also for you, Betsy. You'll play that one as well. Hi there, Betsy. This is Lori. It's nice to see you on the show. I have a two-part question for you. How did the idea come about to use your actual high school picture with Al Bryant as a prop on Life in Pieces? Also, I know that Al passed away last year. 
but did you get any feedback from him or any of your fellow classmates that may have seen it used on set? Thanks so much. Oh my God, it wasn't ready for that. Um, my high school principal, Al Bryant, was um, like just one of the best people you could ever know. Um, and I have a great photo of he and I on my graduation day and it was on the set. I just, it was special to me and they asked for pictures and I thought that would be great. And it's, um, they like photos that are, you know, like moments in a person's life. And um, that was the photo I chose because I had such a fondness, still have for Mr. Bryant. Um, he was aware I had written to him and he knew about the photo. And then um, I'm still, close with former teachers of mine who, when they would visit him, would show him, I took a photo of me with the photo on the set and made sure that he saw it. And I had um, wrote him a note and he wrote me back and um, it was really, really lovely. And I'm glad, and we, we did lose him during COVID actually. And um, it just meant a lot to me that he was there on that show with me. Wow, wow. Oh, a deep question for sure. Thank you for the answer too. And thank you for asking that. Oh my God, what a great question. Both of those questions. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you, Lori and uh, Karina as well. Tom, I'm going to jump over to you for a second. And obviously we're going to just talk a little bit about Better Call Saul. Lots of stuff in the news right now. Today was a big news day. Lots of teasers over the past couple of days. But maybe uh, you could, we could just take a brief moment and maybe give us a summary of what it's been like. You know, this this season, it's wrapping up and just working through this final season, anything you can share, even a little bit of the history, what it's been like. And I know it's bittersweet. It's, yeah, it's been a strange year because of COVID and, you know, the writers working over Zoom all the time and uh, the mask wearing, everyone wearing masks on set and the, and the distancing and um, both somehow we, it's taken a very long time and people on, the internet have been nice enough to remind me of how long it's been. Uh, we, they wrapped yesterday, it was the final day of shooting, and uh, they announced uh, we're on the air April 18th, splitting, splitting the season. AMC decided to split the uh, season into two halves, so uh, seven episodes in the first half, with two episodes premiering uh, on that day. Uh, April 18th, we're going to show episodes one, one and two, and then uh, the second half is sometime in July. I think July 11th. Not the too last, bad. The final six episodes. Not too bad of a wait, yeah, right? Not a, not a big gap. I think the the last episode of uh, the first half will air in uh, mid-May. This is my episode that I wrote and directed. Oh, and, fantastic. Uh, we'll take a little break and come back in July. That's great. That was a question I was going to ask you. I've, I've, I know there's there's data out there. We can find it. We can see the answers. But I was going to ask you what you could say. But have you you've done a couple th uh, this season, or can you say? Yeah, I got to I got to co-write episode two with R.L. Levine, uh, directed by Vince Gilligan. Uh, I wrote and directed episode seven, which will be the finale of the first section, and then I wrote episode eleven of the thirteen, uh, which will air in the second half. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. We've got. Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you, you'll go, go no. ahead. I'll wait for you to call. No. <laughs> okay. Um, wait, Tom. I like. So yesterday it wrapped. Is this it? Like, no movie. No. Like, is this it? Like, I I I need to know, but I'm also a little scared because I'm not ready for it to be over. Why you, he laughs at me? Do you see how he fucking laughs at me? <laughs> I'm, not, toilet, I'm laughing Tom. at Tom. I'm laughing at Tom. Your shitty attitude to the toilet, Tom. <laughs> He's back in the toilet book again. I'm going to find the answer in there, Tom. You never you know. know. Like a back phone to Vince. He does. He does. Uh, I don't know about a movie. That's That would be Peter and Vince's uh, decision. Oh, like you don't have a say. Come on. Cut the shit. I don't. I don't oh, you do say. too. What about here? I, let's hear some ideas. <laughs> let's re, let's spin on this. Let's figure this out tonight. I haven't really worked out the What's time the thing be? because some of the characters are no longer with us. 
So I listen, you always know uh, I want a vacation. We, we could do ghosts. Well, ghosts is, there, very is, there a, is there a trip to Hawaii for Hank and Marie? Uh-huh. That could be good. Yeah. And the Canadian That's podcaster to cover it. Okay. This is for sure. the Brady Bunch episode. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, great, great. Find an okay. idol in a cave. All right, Let's that's bring good. Nando just because and we're just gonna redo the Brady Bunch episode. Right, right. Um, Michael McKean, please, Mando. Like let, let have it, let's have a party. Everybody. Um, or or we always talked about doing a road trip with Marie and Skylar. We could take that, make it a reality, that dream. That was a that was a lost episode. That was a we we talked a long time on Breaking Bad about Skylar and Marie driving to visit their dad. Mm. For some reason, only one connected. of them only one of them shows up alive <laughs> and the audience gets to bat <laughs> on who it is Thelma and Louise yeah there you go there you go the, uh, we're, get, we're getting some good data I'd down I'd love to see you drive off a cliff no that's I'd I love Tesla to see you drive that off a cliff, I Tesla actually. that car off the cliff I'm I'm standing up in the side we should, I, have a, I have a purple Tesla that just like goes off that's a better that's a better ending for Thelma and Louise. They don't decide to do it. They just the car just takes over and yeah. drives them to the camp. We'll see. Yeah. They decide not to, and the car says, Yes, we're going. Yeah. What we're missing here tonight is index yeah. cards. We got some good data for the next show. We just need index cards. Yeah. Right? I gotta write some cards. Yeah, yeah. We draw for old, draw for old cards. That's right. We do have some questions coming in. This is a super chat from Josh Gordon. This is a question for Tom. Uh, good question. Tom says, uh, what made you end last season on the Lalo story versus a Jimmy and Kim story? Ooh. Boy, that's hard. I, that's hard to say. I think it, it was just a feeling of the cliffhanger was better of Lalo not dying in the massacre. Just, uh, um, I think it was just a more exciting ending. Yeah. Yeah. We all decided in the room. And nice with the cliffhanger as well, too, because Jimmy and, and Kim feel safe at the last. They know they've, they're safe. So, yeah. and now they're, you yeah, know. Well, we, they, they end on a, on, a, on a weird place where Kim is finger guns all in to take down Howard Hamlin. Um, and we'll see how that works out. And then, uh, yeah, then a lot of the story. Uh, and, why and, do you say and, it like that? Like, we'll see how that works out. You know, I'm just trying to be vague. Asking for a friend. Yeah. I, I, my biggest fear, my biggest fear is I accidentally give away a plot point that I'm not supposed to. And Peter sure. Gould comes over and, and puts a bag over my head. Betsy, you know, if you're not careful, you're going to get him fired. Oh, wait. He doesn't have anything to do after this. I don't want to get him fired. He doesn't have anything to do fired. after this. He, he's got he the- to, Oh, he's going to have plenty to do. He's just going to have to figure out what he wants to do. He's going to pitch some other kind of crazy story to events. Who knows? I mean, the la- look how the last one worked out. The crazy. Yeah, there you go. More, more of that. <laughs> Do toilet. That's going to be it. That's good. See, it's clues. You guys don't realize there's clues being given here what the next show is right now. Here's the next question. This is from Teresa Martinez. Uh, t- this is for Tom. Any word on when Better Call Saul season five will be released on Netflix? Yeah, you probably don't know, do you? I have no idea. They don't tell me anything. Yeah. Yeah. I we, wish you know, I knew. It's usually around when six airs. So I would be surprised if it didn't come out before. I, I, this is, I'm saying this based on zero knowledge. But I would think that would be on Netflix before season six airs on AMC. Yeah, get everyone caught up and primed. Knock on, knock on wood that happens. Yeah, fingers crossed for sure. Betsy, I'm going to jump over to you for a second. And as you and Tom know, you didn't get, you didn't get to see the birthday uh, messages for Vince. Because again, happy birthday, Vince, by the way. Uh, so we had several really nice messages at the top of the uh, at the top of the show. But I'm just wondering from you. So, he's so old now. He's very old. Is he? Is no. he? It shows. I think he's looking too, pretty good, so, though. Like, Punched over and walks with a. Now he's really fired. What's your opinion? Now, now he's really fired. No, but what, can you share maybe some thoughts of working with Vince back? Uh, you know, on your days of Breaking Bad, either some nice stories working with him, or and or any takeaways that you've learned. You know, as an actor working working with you know his direction and whatnot. Um. Oh, that's like such a God. That's like a whole other podcast. <laughs> um, I would always say like Vince's specificity really paid off for us because it just made the show so good. 
don't, I mean, I, I feel like the vision of what he saw, like he was able to bring that to the screen. And I, my, my biggest thing is that I loved making a person with him, you know, like season one, um, I would ask him all sorts of questions about Marie and where he saw her going and what he wanted her to do and to be on the show. And that was like, just ridiculously helpful in me this like deciding and knowing how to play her and making it clear. And I remember saying it, just the decisions that we make now, I'm hoping we live with them, you know, years from now. And, and we did, I guess you never know, but I also remember him saying, and I'm not a writer, but he would say, you know, I've, I've painted myself into some corners and he has to, cause you know, that's how his voice sounds, Tom. And he has to get him, uncanny. He, has, he has to get himself out of it. And that always like being okay with the not knowing uh, is I think pretty great. That's a pretty great skill to have no matter what you're doing. Um, I think if you're in a creative business and Hollywood or anything else or whatever you're doing, I think being or just living like a person, I think it's, it's good to not know. Good. Well, here's a similar question as well, too. Uh, slightly different. This is from Bob Rich. Uh, what, for you, Betsy, as well. Uh, what were the most rewarding scenes of Breaking Bad for you to perform in? Or what were certain scenes that were specifically powerful or fun? I know there's probably lots, but I mean, any fun? There are. There are. But there are two that come to mind right away to me. Um, season one, The Talking Pillow. And then Tom's scene uh, were there... Hank and Marie are in the bedroom and he has to go in. Oh, that was like oh. that was just... yeah, 307. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites. Yeah, like the, were, the, the list is long, great. but those those two show up to me. And Hank and Marie in the elevator, same episode, right, Tom? Yeah, that was powerful. Um that was that elevator moment. I remember that night. Um, asking Frida, uh, who did my makeup, I said, did we get it? Did we get it? Did we get the elevator scene? Because Marie's just trying so hard to hold it together. And I, a lot of times after that show, I would cry in my trailer before I went home. Because mm. I just, like, you have to figure out what it is. And a, a show that's that intense, you have to figure out what it is you need to do to leave it there before you go back to your life, your real life. For sure. They're very, very powerful scenes. And this is a question now for Tom. Um, uh, this is from LD Sniper. Um, and he says, describe season six in three words. Ooh. And not, Ooh. And not, not dirty words. So Tom's going to say toilet, toilet, toilet. <laughs> you got to give us more than that, Tom. Yeah, it says giant time toilet. No, um, three words. I mean, it's intense. Hopefully it's surprising. And I think it's uh, uh, just for me, uh, sad. Sad, okay. I mean, sad to see it end. Yeah. You know, people say what happens in it is sad. But I think when we get to that final episode, I'm going to be very sorry to see it go. Yeah. Um, I'm, I got, I'm sad at the thought that you guys are going to Very lucky. Play. We're waiting for the freezer again. Got very lucky. I was very sad at the end of Breaking. I got very sad at the end of Breaking Bad, and then this sh this show appeared, so I got very lucky that way. So, um, been a very great run, but um, all good things come to, to an end. Go. Yeah, yeah, it it is going to be sad. We're all we've all been so excited to get back to the, have this on TV, and then it's going to go by so fast. Even with thirteen episodes, it's going to go by fast. You know, I wish Wait, we could 14, 14, right? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. They'll go back and make one more for you, though. One more. I thought it was seven and seven. No, seven and six. Oh, seven and six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Betsy was not good with math. No, it's okay. Oh, do you, do you want 14? Not. Do you want 14, Betsy? Yeah, that's my birthday is 14. Let's do I would. Yes. Please hang on. Let, okay. Let's reach out to Vince right now. Yeah, one more. We, did, we can, you, can, you, can, work. you still got some of the gear there? Yeah. And make we, might have enough, we might have enough. We might have enough. We might have enough outtakes to cobble together another episode. Okay. Fine. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Fine. Here's 
Here's a super chat from Rogava. Rogava, this is for Betsy, uh, says, I have a view of Marie being a light version of Walt. Uh, uh, while his crimes were serious, she had a different side driven by ego, denial, pretending to be someone she wasn't, and stealing. Was this intentional? That being said, she's very lovable and caring. Um, it's funny that all those things, that's exact. I do see her that way. Um, it, it's the scene that I just brought up, the talking pillow. To me, one of my favorite things about this show, and um, I try and do this on every show I do. Um, I love that if you're lucky enough as an actor that, uh, you know, the writers really know who they're writing. And so I look back at the end of the series, Breaking Bad, but then I think also like even for Bob's character, we haven't seen that yet, but I'm sure who he is in the beginning is is who we see like it's still true to character and that was such a gift that they gave me the talking pillow scene marie gets walt she's the only one that thinks he makes sense mm-hmm. and he's like yeah that's his choice like what do you, who, why are you guys fighting with him and and then the other thing it, it, one step further is we see how she's like it's right to let him make that choice and so i'm going to speak up against my sister and stand up for him that's who marie was as long as we got to see her, I'm sure it's who she is now. I think she's probably changed. I think losing Hank was so mind blowing for her that that was like beyond life changing. Um, but I always appreciated the parallel between her and yes, no, she's not doing anything nearly as exciting as, as Walt. Um, but I always appreciated the understanding that the two of them had and the, the parallel between them. Um, and it was just, you know, that kind of show that like, there, there was nothing that just was there that they didn't realize. Like the, the writers just did not, you know, did not miss a beat. And it was um, just truly a joy to get to dig into those scripts. It spoiled me. Nice. Nice. Well, it's a good, that's a great question as, as well too. So thank you, Rakafa. That's a really, really good question. That was fun. And Tom, here's one for you. This is from Nat Romero. And it's so funny. This is so, so, uh, time, time, timely here because last night I was watching uh, season two. I'm catching up with uh, my better half Maggie. We were watching the scene where the episode where uh, Jim and Kimmy get uh, Jimmy and Kim get the uh, the office right, the dentist office, right it becomes their first office. And this is from Nat says Tom, are we going to get the dentist chair love scene from season two in a flashback to season or something? <laughs> that unfortunately has been locked away somewhere. Um, that didn't make the cut and. Peter decided to not release it uh, on the DVD, the Blu-ray extras. So I don't think, you know, maybe there will be a super extended edition set when all six seasons are put together. You know, maybe Peter will decide to do some extras that were never seen. Cool. Cool. There you go. Now, here's a question coming to both of you. This is, and this is nice. It's nice when we get to kind of hypothesize a little bit. And sometimes it's easier for the writers because they might have had some ideas for some of these characters. They they would have for sure in some cases. But this is from Mary Arnold to both of you. Uh, What do you think happened to Marie after the events of Breaking Bad? And Betsy, we'll go with you first. What do you think happened to her? Um, It's funny. Sometimes I feel like you figure out by knowing what didn't happen. I, I had someone ask me after uh, Breaking Bad ended, I, I think I was like in New York and someone came up to me and um, and said, do you think she killed herself? And I said, absolutely not. Because I think that she knows that Hank would never want her to do that. And I also, I feel like, you know, she, she was hung up on some stuff, you know, like there was some arrested development there with her. And I, I feel like that, I, I think losing someone that you love that much is it, it changes your priorities. If you're hung up on stuff. I, so I feel like a lot of that, she would let go. And I look back to, you know, the last time we see her, she's wearing all white, like basically like there's no, like the purple and the, the stuff like that, that she would hang on to is gone. And I feel like she kept going in that direction. I, I don't have an answer yet for what happened with her and Skylar. And I'm kind of scared to know because it's hard for me to imagine Marie truly forgiving her. Um, but also Marie loves her so much and they, 
were so I loved, I always loved that relationship with the two of them. So that's about as far as I can get. I think about her a lot though. I do think about her. I know it's pretend. I know I get it and life goes on, but I, I miss her and I think about her a lot. You lived with that character for a long time. Yeah. And I just loved her. Just, I still love her. I Hello. like how you, before before Tom answers, I like how you t- talked about the color because she went from this vibrant, it's almost like the opposite with Jimmy to Saul Goodman. He right? goes with this, you know, stale, one-dimensional character, inflatable episode, obviously, you know, trying to lose his gig at Davis and Maine and that color when he comes so vibrant, it's the opposite. Yep. Yeah. So Tom, how about yourself? What do you think happened to her uh, after after uh, the events of Breaking Bad? I have pitched this idea so many times that I'm convinced of it happened uh, but we never did it i always believe that marie wrote a book the definitive ah! book about about walter white and all the insides and the loss of her husband and she wrote a best-selling book okay i'm going to say that she did i'm saying i'm taking that tom i'm gonna say that she absolutely did because <laughs> she knows best right no, we never she did knows, that but i right yeah. she knows she knows best yeah, yeah. it has to yeah. share no she did the talk show circuit and she she wrote a very popular, definitive book. Oh my God, Tom! Let's shoot that on your iPhone. I'll have to book her on the show too. It'd be a good, be, be a good guest, I think. <laughs> See if you guys can maybe share some contacts. That'd be fantastic. We we have another super chat that came in. This is from Saul Goodman uh, on Twitter. Uh, Chris, uh, Tom, address unknown and Uno lyrics completely sound like it's about Kim. Not sure if it was even a thought then. And he's also going on to say, hi, Betsy, love you. And Hank Marie spinoff, definitely. That'd be cool. But his maybe his thoughts on the address unknown? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the song is about... He thought it would kind of sounded like it was about uh, Kim. Yeah. I mean, there's a, it's an ex- old... Um, I guess it, it's up to the viewer. I'm not going to say anything. Sure. Or the other. <laughs> Oh, this is good. This is a great question coming in. I know you guys love talking about color. We just talked about color with, you know, with, uh, with Marie. This is from Blasey Gardner. Tom, what color would you use to describe season six? You get a color to describe the season. (laughs) That's it. That's, that's a big question. I don't know. I, I'm afraid to answer because I feel like I'm going to give too Don't answer. Okay. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay, I mean, the, like I say I want to know, but I don't want to know. Then Betsy, you guess because right. you can't be wrong. All right. I'll say, I'll say plaid. Plaid. Okay. Plaid. I was going to say magenta. Ooh, I like that. That's the color of my car. I like that. A little that. bit of a, like, a shock, um, but like beautiful in a harsh way. And then a throwback to uh, some, mm-hmm. some wild stuff. And there's a lot of different colors to the season. I mean, this is a, it's 13 episodes. There's a lot that happens. I mean, I can go through the, I can go through the color of the rainbow in this one <laughs> before we get to the final. I episode. love that. Uh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be really cool. And I'm, I'm afraid to venture a guess as well too, but I'll, I'll go with magenta. Like Betsy said, just cause I love the color of my car. This is from Turk Turkey. Uh, uh, says, Tom, what do you think the fans will say after the final episode in one word? That's another tough one. I think I think My, they'll say next. Yeah, yeah. More. <laughs> it's probably gonna be damn, so, damn. I, know, um, <laughs> I hope so. I hope it's something good. I was, you know, our the one desire we always have in the writers' room is that the uh, the viewing audience shits their pants. So. Uh, I hope it's some, something along those lines of uh, needing a, a, a pants change. Okay, okay. Change of pants. Okay, that's more than one word, Tom. Poop, poop. Yeah, there you go. Poop, yeah, we can poop. say poop. Poop, okay. Poop, <laughs> we say poo. Oh, okay. Not- I hopefully, hopefully people say, people say wow or, or damn or shit. Okay. Any, oh, any exclamation? Yeah. Any- <laughs> that's two words. Give me one more because I haven't been completely flagged for the evening here tonight on YouTube. One more. <laughs> Here's the next question. This is from Cat Hubbard. <laughs> from Cat Hubbard says, "What's the back?" Because okay, so we talked about the purple. Is can you share the backstory on Marie's purple fetish? Now, Betsy, you'd be given some of the backstory, a little bit of it, of the character. Is that something that you can answer? 
Or is it a writer um, question for Tom? Um, our costume designer, Kathleen Del Toro, um, had a, like one of her superpowers was color. So she gave everybody a color. And I just thought Marie was so like Marie that I just said, if purple is her color, then that is her color. I think she's like obsessed with it. And like, it, like, because yeah. it's the color, it's the color of Queens. Isn't it, it, is, it is royalty. Yeah. Yes, it is the color of royalty. Yes, Tom. Thank you yeah. for noticing. So it really stuck. It really stuck with Marie and Betsy. So it just felt. And then, and then it everybody got that all happened before I got there. I, I joined in season. Yeah, I was already into the purple when Tom came aboard. I, did you practice a royal wave or anything like that? Like, you know, however, however he that always does that. You oh. mean me or Tom? Tom always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got, he's got it down pretty good. He's this got it good. Screwing the light bulb. Screwing the light bulb, the figure eight. Yeah, there you go. And there's one more I forget. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> the white washing the window. Yes. Yep. Now, here's a question I know we can't answer, and you don't have to get the answer because we can't answer it, but it's a good question anyways. Mike Fault says, uh, Tom, can you divulge any music tracks used in season six? Mm. Is that something you probably can't say? Polka? It's not all, we're actually... Uh, everything, nothing's really been edited yet, mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping to have a monkey song in one of my... Oh, my Frozen. I'm hoping to have a monkey song in one of my episodes. Nice, nice. And you're you're being serious, right? Correct. And uh, I you know, so I'm, I'm... we got to get we got to get you a land connection. Monkeys. So I'm dead serious. I had a monkeys episode in a monkey song. Uh, pretty bad. Um, I had a. Did you hear any of that? I got monkey song. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go monkey song. That's all. That's all I can hear. So let's fingers crossed for monkey song. Um, this is a super chat from Josh Gordon, and this is for Betsy. Uh, Betsy, are you going to be uh, in the upcoming season of Love, Victor? I loved your last season. Did not recognize you. Oh, oh, well, oh, well, she's going through some stuff. Um, I think I can say I am. I mean, I guess I just did. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cats out of the bag now. Um, yes, I still, I play Felix's mom and I love, love, love that show. And I will come back season three. Um, I love, love, love that show. I absolutely love that show. Glad you're watching it. Awesome. And good question. Thank you for asking. And Betsy, I, I have, like, were you always a fan of Better Call Saul? Are you, have you, have you, are you just catching up to it now? Where, where do you kind of put it no, in your real house? I, I watch it with my husband in like fits and in, in, in spurts. Like there's times I have been that person where, which used to annoy me on Breaking Bad, where I'm like, don't say anything because I haven't seen it yet. But I, I really try and not be that far behind. Sometimes if like I'm working or I'll get behind. And honestly, sometimes it takes me a, a, a minute to kind of gear up to watch it. And then I end up getting lost in it. But I, I always feel like, oh my God, it's like my family's together and I'm not there and not invited. And so I feel a little, a little bit left out. And it um, reminds me of uh, the work I get, I used to get to do on Breaking Bad. But I have to tell you, I think it is, and I'm on the inside, it's, it's so perfect in that it's like, it's the same world, but it's like, it's whole other thing. Like it's, it's just wildly different people and it's a different world. I love the, the time, the change, the, the time. I love the relationship between, well, whatever you want to call Bob, you know, because he's, you can call him a few different names. Um, and, and Kim Wexler, like it's, it's so different from our world, but yet it's the same. So I, I, I really do enjoy watching it. And I think it's just, you know, it's, it's just amazing television. It certainly is. It certainly is. Yeah. Uh, here, here is a comment. Um, it's quite funny. Uh, it's from Blazy Gardner. She says, Tom and I are sharing internet, I think. 
So I think I think Blazy Gardner lives right beside Tom, and they're they're they got the coax cable going between each other's houses. That's why the internet's so bad. And somebody's downloading something. I don't know what it is. The, the kid's getting some some games or something. I don't know. Um, here's a, qu- a good question from Morty, um, and that's that's a nice question for people that haven't seen the shows. Do you think when season six is done, should someone who hasn't seen anything uh, Breaking Bad related watch Better Call Saul first or Breaking Bad? Ooh. How about you, Tom? What are your thoughts on that? That's a great, great question. Yeah. I, I would, I tend to lean towards watching it in order it was released. So I do too. Going back and watching. Yeah, I would, I would say that too, in order of release. Watching Breaking Bad from the beginning and I'm getting it, even though the, yeah. It, but I think it'd be interesting to watch it like the, the Godfather cut they put on ABC where it was put into chronological order. Something very interesting about that, but I think the best way is to watch it in the order it came out. Well, I think so too, I, because I think when you go back and you see Bob, you know, like it, it's just it's set up so differently if you've already seen Breaking Bad, and I, I, I would hate to lose that in watching Saul first. You know, mm-hmm. like it's, it's just. Yeah, I would hate to. I would hate to lose that. But that's a good question. It's it is. Question. It and it's like like I like Star Wars, and there's so many different ways people like they're religious about it. You have to watch it in this order. Some people say the yeah. the release order. You know, there's like it's holy. It's crazy. You know, and I've seen them all as well too, and I've tried to watch them in certain orders as well. It's just it's just different, right? And then of course El Camino, of course too, right? Um, right. Another question. This is from if I'm going to pronounce it wrong, I'm sure uh, Bali Vraga. Um, I apologize if I said your name wrong. Uh, Fisco is the name of Gene's packet of photos from Portland, Maine. It's hidden in the shoebox in season one, episode one. We haven't met Fisco yet. Any comments? And again, too, if it's something coming up, we won't touch on it. But is it just, what do you think on that, Tom? Uh, it's a detail I'd never noticed. I would, If that was a trivia question, I would have gotten it wrong because I didn't, I don't know. Good. There you go. See, it happens, right? Yep. Stump the staff. We got it. That's okay. That's a good one. Uh, And a question from Preston Rutherford. Uh, Tom, this is for Tom. Was there an episode that was particularly difficult to break this season, or did the story flow more naturally than you expected? By the way, you are an inspiration. I know. Thank you. I know. I inspire so many people. You do. Uh, The whole season was a pain in the ass to break because of Zoom. Everybody had these internet issues. Vince would scream and curse because he'd freeze or someone would freeze. Um, so the I don't think any, it definitely didn't flow easier than previous seasons. Uh, it was just uh, the technology made it harder instead of easier. It was nice to be home with the kids and have lunch with them. But uh, other than that, it was uh, didn't really flow very well. And you, t- you told me on the show before a couple of times, you've been on a few times during the course of the pandemic, and you said one of the important things were that the show can't look or feel different. It just can't. And that's hard to do in the course of a pandemic. Would you safely say, uh, I know you said there's editing to do still, but um, would you safely say that the audience isn't going to know that there is a pandemic going on? Yeah, I think years from now, people will watch these episodes and not know that they were filmed during, that's a, just a tribute to the crew. The yeah. amazing job they did. I mean, there were while we were shooting the, my last episode. I mean, we did takes. I think I tweeted about it where a character had a face mask on, and because there was no dialogue, I didn't notice that we were filming him with a face mask. Oh, so we would have to say, and like the entire just now we were mask blindness. We weren't because we were so used to seeing each other in masks. And when the actor forgot to take it off on screen, we didn't notice until because there weren't talking. It was just a kid, just a scene of somebody looking at something or doing something. And we'd yell, cut, okay, move on. And somebody would go, oh, wait a minute, he forgot to take his mask off. Oh, shoot. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. To think that that could happen. And me and the DP and the, you know, the script coordinator, the, uh, you know, script supervisor who's in charge of continuity. Would somehow not see 
Someone oh with God, mask. That's so crazy. It so, is. But it makes sense. The, yeah. The character wearing a, a, a face mask. <laughs> but they're not. We lost you a little bit, but I understand what your your point you're trying to make. The fact that it it's just so normal that you just continue on with it and you just don't think about it. And then yeah, you probably a good scene too, possibly. And shoot, we got to do it again. Yeah, we got time for maybe. Uh, um, oh, um, there's there's a Saul Goodman Twitter. He says testicle thread topic cannot be ignored. So you've had that thread going on Twitter for a long time, Tom. It's almost a year now. It, one one a day for. A- year for almost a year now no it's changing changing one word in a song title is that what it was it's one word in a movie title oh in a movie title somebody, okay yeah somebody I tweeted out a about testicles long before that tom just made it yeah. famous yeah 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 our one of our last two things here for the evening this is no, from eman Eamon is a good friend and moderator here as well, too, part of the team. Says, Tom, a question for Tom. What's up next for you? Uh, signed up for anything or just a bunch of sleep in your future? <laughs> uh, there's stuff I'm hoping to be working on, um, but no, there's nothing in stone yet. Okay. It's all in the beginning phases. Good. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. I, I think um, Tom is one of the funniest people that I know. So I hope whatever you do, you, you, but you, I mean, clearly you're a gifted dramatic writer, but I hope you get to flex the, the, like mining the funny in something a little bit too. Well, thank you. You're, you're also, I mean, Betsy, I don't know if I could repeat the first thing she ever said to me. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't. She whispered it in my ear. I was like, oh, no, I'm and then go I forgot I said it to you. And I said, I said this to someone and Tom, we were at lunch and Tom goes, that was me. And I went, oh my God. Cause like, I don't really know you, but apparently I feel like I can say whatever to you. I, I knew uh, I read the room. I read that room and I knew you wouldn't, you wouldn't judge me. I don't know if you judging me would have stopped me. <laughs> you guys have to tell me off the air. I'm anxious to hear this now. <laughs> We've got. We'll tell you sometime. We are not telling you now. Good move, Tom. Good one. Good one. We have one last comment here. I just want to share. This is from Jen Stevens. It's a super chat. She, she's one of our moderators and very good friends as well, too. She says, thank you, Tom and Betsy from the entire Gilliverse uh, for all your contributions over the years. We love you. And I think we can all uh, agree oh, with that. God. It's wonderful. I, can I tell you how special it is? Like, I'm, I'm not there, but it, like, it hit me that you guys, because I, you know, so I'm still friends with a lot of people on the crew and people are posting about finishing the season. And it is, I, I, I kind of hope it's not done, even though I, I think it probably is, but it's such an era. It's been such an era. It has, it has, you know, we've, we, we've asked Vince ourselves a couple of times. He's been on the show here twice and you know, he, I like what he's, I like the way he's always said it, you know, kind of like never say never kind of thing, but he knows when to get out too. You know, it's just, there's so many shows I like that have gone on so long and, and I've, I get kind of mad cause I've invested so many years into these shows and then now I don't yeah. even like them. So I like the fact where you guys are getting out with the way you do. He always said he wanted to leave the party early. He said that Breaking Bad would not go past three seasons. Remember? So he's like, and then he was like, well, um, and I just, but, but he, he, like, you guys never pulled any punches. It just like, it always went where it was. I really believe it was meant to go, yeah. you know, like it's, it is thrilling for me to watch the characters now. Yeah, for sure. Thrilling. Well, as I just mentioned a moment ago, Jen Stevens is something I want to show. Well, on. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, no, I'm, I know people are anxious to see it. Uh, and I'm just, I want to get it on the air. I'm, I've been living with this particular uh, season for a very long time now. And I want people to see it. <laughs> I'll bet. I don't want it to be yeah. it's weird. I don't want it all. I don't want it all to end, but I'm anxious to see for people to see what we've been, been doing all this time. Yeah. Good. Good. That's fair. We're all very anxious. I just want to show something quickly on the eager. screen here. We're eager. We're eager. That's right. 
I showed you guys this earlier off camera. This is a really, really cool. If people that are familiar with season five, better call Saul, the Davis and Maine water bottle. Try to get it on the camera there. Jen Stevens herself made this. She made a select uh, few of them, and I was kind of lucky enough to receive one. She sent me one. We've got another one in a box. So she made these herself. Very, very cool. And I was trying to explain what this is to my better half, and she hasn't seen, she's only at season two right now, so she doesn't know what this is. And she's going to be really grossed out when she does find out what goes in here. Um, but anyways, we're going to give one of these away. So when this video is done tonight, the, when, the, when the live video is done, you can comment down below. Just say a comment, get, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and just put a comment down what you're hoping to see in uh, season six, your thoughts on, on the whole series, whatever you want. Just leave a nice comment down below, and we're going to, by the next episode, we're going to pick a, uh, a winner randomly from comments, and it's going to be just after, your birthday is on the 4th, isn't it, of March? Is that right, Betsy? Me? Oh, the 14th. 14th. 27. I'll be 27. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, so I wrote that down because our Pretty next... Laughing, Tom. <laughs> Because close to that, we've got, uh, we're going to be back. We're going to be probably doing this once a month now just to get everything in order. So Friday, March 4th, we're going to be back with Howard Hamlin himself. Patrick Fabian's going to be on. Uh, Shut back. up! Yeah. Yeah. Patrick was on Wait, the show. He dresses up. I, he's, yeah, he's probably going to be, he's probably going to be laid back. He's going to rock and roll. Probably like yourself, rock and roll, right? Yeah, he's, but he's Howard Hamlin. Yeah, I feel like he should be dressed up. Well, maybe we'll make it Hamlin to go blue night. We'll do that. Okay. Okay. But he's coming back. So I just want to say thank you. Don't let him. Just a warning. Don't let him fool you. He's a, he's a big Hollywood phony. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to getting back because he was on Rock Shop Live before we became Gilliverse until I pitched this idea to Tom and then it, look what it's become now, right? So it's been, it's been fun. Season three, we're here already. This is nice. We're looking forward. To, and this year's going to be a big year for this show here too because all the cast and crew that we were wanting to get back, like the Mandos and Ray and, and everybody, uh, Tony Dalton as well too. He hasn't been on the show, but he will be coming. It's, they ha they can't say anything yet, right? So we're going to get a couple episodes out. They can they talk. can't say anything. I know. I mean, I want them to, but I don't want them to. At least like, they can talk. about feel that way, right? That's right. Like, we want to know, but we don't want to know. At least they can talk about like last week's episode kind of thing, you know, in the past, True. always in the past. True. But I just want to say True. thanks to both of you guys for joining me again tonight. And there's a, there's a whole round of people I'd like to say thank you to very quickly here as well, too. So big, big, big thank you to Karina, our executive producer here. She does a great job in the chat. She does so much to make my job easier. Thank you, Karina. We appreciate that. Uh, thank you to Jen and all of our moderators, uh, Renata uh, and Eamon as well, too. Uh, I'd like to thank our, our first and foremost to our, our uh, sponsors here of the show, uh, Warren over at Royal Bobbles, with all those bobbleheads you see behind us. Pretty awesome there as well, too, bobbleheads.com. And uh, again, come see us on the 4th of March, back with Patrick Fabian. And if you're new here to the channel, I know there's some new faces in the chat, please consider subscribing down below. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and even that new TikTok thing that I I'm, I feel so old being on that thing. Uh, inside the Gilliverse, check. You guys, do you use TikTok, Betsy? Um, I've only done it once. I made a video and I, I did a dance with my daughter and I, I really fucked up my toe. Oh no. Well, look at T that's the sign right there. You shouldn't even, never even it's dangerous. It's dangerous. My TikTok toe, but it was last year, the Super Bowl. So I feel like we need to do another video this year. Did you see Tom's dancing on TikTok? No, I'm not allowed. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's filtered. It's been filtered. I think it's been reported in about 12 countries. I don't know if there's a filter big enough, but, um, <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, we're going to say goodbye here. I'm going to re-roll that video from the beginning for those that didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, you get to say, uh, see all the, our friends wishing uh, the captain of the ship, Vince Gilligan, a very, very happy birthday. Vince, happy birthday. Thank you for all the, the birthday, great content. Vince Gilligan. Yes. Yeah, so looking forward to getting him back when everything settles down happy after birthday, season Vince. two. And hi, mom, if you're watching. Hey, Tom's mom. Hi, Tom's mom. Let's <laughs> say hi to my mom. Hi. I love your mom, Tom. She's wonderful. She's been a, she's been an avid watcher for quite a bit. Whenever Tom's on, I think she just wants to make sure he's you know minding his manners, which he never does. No, no. Oh yeah. She know she doesn't expect that. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna uh, stay, stay stay put here. I'm gonna roll the outro credits here with the happy birthdays, and everyone will see you uh, Friday, March fourth. Make sure that's the right day. If not, Karina and everyone will correct me in the chat. But uh, Patrick Fabian's gonna be here, and we're gonna continue on with a great season of Inside the Gilbert. So let's check out that book real quick one more time. Tom, show that book. One more time, Tom. Show that this book. is a book my mother sent me, which I'm reading. I just want to wanted to let her know I'm reading it. I got it. And I'm reading it. Good. All right. Keep your promises. About the New York Times. And she sent me an article with the headline: uh, "Schnauzing Crisis." Schnauzing Crisis. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. 
All right, don't go away, guys. We're going to say goodbye to you. Everyone, we'll see you soon, and uh, take care. We'll see you next time right here inside Gilverse. Until then, cheers. Hey, everyone. Eric here, host of Inside the Gilliverse. As many of you may know, today is the captain of the ship, Vince Gilligan's birthday, and we thought we'd do something very special for him. So I reached out to some of my friends. I'm sure you're going to recognize these faces and ask if they'd like to send some birthday greetings for Vince, and that they did. So without further ado, let's have a quick look and listen as to what they had to say. Hello, sir. Happy birthday, my friend. I hope it's a brilliant one. I think I'll open a bottle of champagne and toast you myself. Hi, Vince. It's me. You know, they say you have to sing happy birthday twice in order to be safe from COVID while washing your hands. So, happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Vince. Happy birthday to Vince. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vince. You have changed my life and so many people's lives, not just through your brilliant work, but for who you are as you move through the world. And uh, I thank you for that. And I'm so grateful to know you. And happy birthday! Vince Gilligan. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> no hard feelings. Right? Hey, it wasn't my idea. It was Eric's idea. I will never do a thing like that. Not me. It was all him. Mm. I'll make it up to you. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Yay. I know. I should have been a singer, right? I know. <laughs> the Salamanca Cartel wants to wish you a very happy birthday. We hope you have a great day. Keep breaking bad, Vince. You are. A friend of the cartel. Happy birthday, Vince. It's Mike Pataya. Dennis Markowski, you know. Right there. That's me, the human shish kebab. Again, happy birthday, sir. You look great for 78. And may gravity be kind to you when you sit down on the toilet. Vince, happy birthday. I'm just flying to the States for the first time from Germany in three years since all this mess started. Um, can't wait to see you again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Yes, we do. Happy birthday to heyday. Hooray day. And every day we celebrate your amazing grace. Happy birthday, we honor you, cherish you, relish you, admire you each and every day. We inspire you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Yes, we do. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. We love you. Team, we love you. Happy birthday. Hello, Vince. Here I am uh, back in Canada on a movie set in Vancouver. And I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful happy birthday. You are a genius at everything you do. Thank you for teaching me so much. And I really hope you have a blast today. And I hope to see you really soon. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. I hope it's a good one for you, Vince. Happy birthday. Vince! Vince, 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 Vince! How are you, brother? Kevin Wattell here. 
Actually, Rex Lynn here, but Kevin Wattell has a little message for you. I'll give it to you in a minute. I hope this finds you in great spirits and really healthy and happy and and your family's healthy and happy and in great spirits. Man, I'm a big birthday guy, and I'm, I'm very honored to be able to say happy birthday to you, brother. Uh, I think I should sing happy birthday. And maybe I got a buddy here, my buddy Riddler. He and I want to sing happy birthday to you. This is my grand champion show dog, Riddler. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother. Now, Kevin Wattell wanted me to call you and let you know he's he's doing great. Mason Barrett, he's really doing great. But he apparently still pissed off a little bit at uh, Saul Goodman. But uh, anyway, he wanted me to tell you hello. Happy birthday, Vince. Hope you have a great one. Can't wait for season six, baby. See you later. Notice the hat, too. Good looking hat. Take care, brother. See you down the road. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vince. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Vince. Whoa, Dad, I didn't know you could play. Yeah. Chuck sounds better. Happy birthday, Vince. Happy birthday, Vince. Happy birthday, Vince. Hey, Vince, my friend. It's Peter. I'm here in Albuquerque. It is snowing like nobody's business. And I am here to tell you, happy birthday. Have a great one, my friend. Uh, from everybody here in Albuquerque to you, uh, hope you're having a fantastic day. I've been trying to get some dramatic lighting for this. Something you'd appreciate. Oh, wow, look at that. Hey, Vince. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Thanks for this wonderful year we've all had. Despite the traumas we've been through, both of us, uh, uh, here we are, and a great season and a great series wrapping soon. And all to your credit, you're the best. Happy birthday. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.